This video series is a remake of a plot explanation I made for 13 Sentinels back in 2020 with the original Western launch. I'm remaking it now due to the Switch port being released and also because the original had poor audio quality. Please enjoy and be wary of spoilers throughout the entirety of these seven videos. And now Amnesiac Juro Izumi is given fake memories of life as Juro Karabe and admitted as a new student to Sakura High School alongside the other refugees from Sector 3. However, Morimura, now posing as a teacher, tries to implant the memories of her Juro Uzumi in him due to her lingering affection. The AI of Tamao Kurabe, now placed in an android body, stops her after the first four implants, but these are enough for Juro to start having dreams of the other Izumi's life. Shu, also a student at Sakura High, undergoes the same treatment and starts having dreams of Ida's life. The two bond over these dreams and realise they all portray similar locations and events. Iori, who in turn was being given memories of Morimura herself, tells them she's been having dreams just like theirs as well. One day, while cleaning the science room, Iori accidentally activates a gate hidden within and is taken to Sector 2. She recognises it as the place from her dream and reunites with A, who she had bumped into while running to school one day. That she is capable of accessing a gate that Morimura had locked makes him realise the two are biologically identical, but a Deimos attack separates them and he is forced to escape. She faints from the shock and is found by Goto, who makes the same deduction as A and uses her to access Morimura's logs, which reveal she had created another the clone and left her in the care of the Mura family in Sector 5. After this, he takes Iori to the nurse's office in Sector 4, where she is convinced that everything she saw was another dream. Meanwhile, Tomi refuses to believe that her family is dead, but can't act without permission from Goto, Morimura, or their allies in this timeline, Shikishima Industries. She decides to dig up dirt on the company to negotiate with, and to this end is introduced to Nenji by their mutual friend Miwako. At the same time, A investigates the gate of the science room after his encounter with Iori, but is confronted by Ryoko. Iori passing nearby unlocks the gate and it activates, but with the input coordinates skewed, not only are A and Ryoko walked to Sector 3, but so are Tomi, Miwako and Nenji who are nearby. The latter trio are knocked unconscious by the unstable trip and A convinces Ryoko that he isn't 426 before leaving, but her deteriorating condition causes her to collapse and forget the information. When the others awaken, they find and leave Miwako to look after her while Tomi and Nenji investigate. During their travels, they find a broken kaiju and discover that it is in fact a terraforming machine built by by Shikishima Industries and are attacked by androids near the destroyed school, but are saved by A who offers to help them escape. A is accompanied by the AI Miura. Ryoko escapes from Miyoko's care and sets the androids to attack A again, only to collapse once more inside the supercomputer by the time the others arrive. Tomi accidentally reactivates her previous self, but the supercomputer, called Universal Control, refuses a connection with her. More androids arrive and the group flees back to Sector 4, but despite all of them teleporting together, Miyoko is nowhere to be found when they arrive. Yuki's story begins here with her arrested after starting a fight at a nearby boys' school. She is blackmailed by Ida to transfer to Sakura High and help Ryoko track the students there by promising to take care of her father, who has been assaulted in prison by gang members for killing one of their leaders. Specifically, she is told that Shikishima Industries is involving minors in the production of nuclear weapons. While she refuses to cooperate at first, she is alarmed to learn that one of the students under suspicion is her childhood friend, Natsuno Minami. That night, Shu's TV seems to malfunction during an airing of her performance by idol Miyuki Inoue Inaba, but then Inabe talks to him directly and begs him to save her. The next day, Iori sneaks into the science room and activates the gate again, reuniting her with A, though he sends her right back. Meanwhile, Tomi finds Miyuko alive and well in class, but without any memories of their time in the future. Natsuno's story begins at the same time when she discovers the AI Miura in her school's changing rooms. A fan of alien movies, she assumes he's an alien on the run from the men in black suits, actually men with the SIU, and that his first words, BJ011005, are his name, which she abbreviates to BJ. She takes him to Tokisaka Shrine so the two can search each sector for Sentinel-17, eventually leading them to Sector-5. They find Sentinel-19 and overhear Okuno sneaking back in to install his makeshift cure for DD-426 into it, alongside Ko that would copy this cure to any potential pilot Miura, who as stated before is 19's pilot, comes into contact with. However, when Okuno returns to Sector-4, he locks a gate at Tokisaka Shrine behind him, stranding Natsuno and BJ in the past. At this point, the current Miura finds them but before he can do anything, the kaiju attack. After ensuring his sister and Tamao are safe, he goes to his sentinel and Natsune follows, but Goto kidnaps his sister, Chihiro's child clone, and wounds Tamao. Later, Miura is about to lose to the kaiju, but Natsune and BJ, who hid in the sentinel's maintenance shaft, prompt the sentinel to shift to sector 4. Miura leaves thinking he's in America until a fight with Nenji leaves him recovering in Shu's apartment, and he learns the truth while Goto hides the child, now with her memories restored, in a secret location in sector 4. A run-in with the SIU back in Sakura High 
Kai reveals Yuki's ties to them to Natsuno, while the AI Tamao makes arrangements to allow Megumi to live with Juro. Natsuno is attacked by the android Tomi but is rescued by the android Tamao, but when Tomi is destroyed, 46 possesses the latter instead and shoots Natsuno with a special gun. She recovers with no memory of the incident and reunites with Mura the next day, asking Juro to take him in. Mura later convinces her to take him back to 1945, where Tamao tells him of Jihiro's kidnapping before vanishing. BJ theorizes that universal control is keeping her until this world comes to an end. Mura tracks down Chihiro in 1985 and she admits she has memories of both her adult self and her time as his brother, but chooses to go with Renya, who points out that he would be unable to protect her and challenges him to track down A, who he says is a threat to her. At the same time, Natsuno warps Sector 2 and learns that the Sentinels are also made by Shigishima and that she and the other humans are the real aliens. The pair travel to Sector 1 to find the data BJ had hidden, then to Sector 3 to gain access to the satellite, but are confronted by Ryoko who is under orders to retrieve BJ. She knocks Natsuno unconscious and kidnaps the latter, leaving Natsuno stranded in the future. Back in the 80s, Ryoko shouts BJ's consciousness off and views a video of her 2188 self sabotaging the simulation after Bat Eater's betrayal. Refusing to accept that he would betray her, she begs Yuki, who happens to be passing by, to hide the scout unit and lets her deteriorating mind delete the memory, but with this also forgets about Natsuno. Thanks for making it to the end of this segment. I'll see you in the next. Please consider liking, commenting, subscribing to help the channel grow. But again, thank you for watching and as always, have a great day.